and welcome to The Sanctuary, a safe space to speak from the heart. I'm your host, Israel, and my guest today is David Serrero, opera singer, producer, director, actor. There are so many things you are doing, man. Uh, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, my brother. How is everything for you? Going okay, going okay. So, um, you know, we met when you have your film um, about Tahari, this person that came with basically not in his pocket and then built this fashion empire. I, I, I just want to lead back to that story. Like, what about that story pulled you to tell it? Well, I I was always impressed by these people who who started out of nothing and not just at the level zero who started minus something, you know what I mean? <laughs> and And then who arrived uh, not only at a very big success, but also were able to change a little bit the game in their own uh, field, mm. you know? So that was what really uh, attracted me uh, also with Eli Tahari, but also aside of that, his personality, his generosity, his kindness, mm. and his really sense of fashion, his sense of business, his sense of growth, mm. uh, all of that really, really inspired me, you know. And and also I, I love fashion and I love the universe of fashion. Mm, mm, mm. Um, the story is so gripping. It's so personal. It's so touching. And, and Tahari you. is like really open. How did you get someone of that status to open up and pretty much give you uh, free reign to make this film well i i give him a lot of alcohol <laughs> <laughs> no he was actually i was lucky in a way because it happened i mean i was lucky but also i wouldn't have done it if that wouldn't have happened it's uh, that it was during covid you know so he was basically uh, home and doing nothing you know just answering some phone calls but it was like really bored it was like the lockdown started in march and and i filmed him like in june july around mm. that time so it, it you know you stay home a month two months third but three months after what you do so he had he was more at ease more relaxed he was not in distress like he didn't have a collection to build or or to design mm. it was he, he had time, but I'm saying that in a way I wouldn't have done it because it's only because I had nothing else to do and no shows, and that I was like, okay, let's do, let do, let's do this documentary, which I always wanted to do no matter what. Mm. But it turned out that it was actually my uh, uh, the the stars were perfectly aligned. You mm, know? Mm. It's it's always wonderful to me how in such adversity as like the whole world being locked down in pandemic it opens your mind to other opportunities and other directions you can take things, you know? Yeah, because you, you cut every day. It's a very good uh, comment, Israel. It's like you cut every day uh, with the little things. You know, the little things keep you busy, but you, you, you focus too much on the little thing that you don't have time for the big stuff, mm. you know? But sometimes once you drop a little bit the little thing and you focus only on the big stuff, then you don't have to worry about the little things anymore. Mm. You know what I mean? So uh, that I knew I wanted to go to movies. I knew I wanted, I was already directing like dozens and dozens of theatrical productions. So I knew that directing a film was something that will, that will come naturally. But for some reason, I was scared. I don't know why I was scared. <laughs> and then I... I have a, there's a director who is like 19 or 20 years old, a very good guy, very good, a very good filmmaker. He hired me for his movie and, and I told him I'm, I, I was scared to start to direct movies. And it was like, dude, I'm 20 or <laughs> forgot, which, you know, he's like, I know nothing, you know, I wish I had 1% of your knowledge. Yeah. So don't worry, you know? So, so, so I was like, oh, okay, maybe you're right. So then I did the documentary. I thought it was the easiest way to go into directing, but it turned out that it was the most difficult mm -hmm. thing, you know, and, and the, the movie is now many film festivals, including yours. And I'm so grateful. 
And uh, they all said, man, we cannot believe that this is your first film because to put 40 years of fashion, you know, especially fashion on the screen, it has to be shown a very interesting way. Mm -hmm. And uh, and the way you put it was very, very good. And it's like very um, uh, punchy, you know. Uh, the colors also, I made them very punchy, everything. So... Uh, I'm, I'm very, very happy, and it gave me the desire to do at least two more movies per year, at wow, least. Wow, that is that is a great goal. Plus a series. I'm doing also a series. Oh, now. okay. We'll get yeah. into that. But, like, I guess your artistic beginnings was more in, like, theater and the opera. How did you get into that? Well, the opera, I, I was... Um, uh, singing before, you know, as a pop singer, most likely jazz and all of that. And I was playing piano and uh, then I started to do theater mm. and I really love theater. And then people told me, wait, you're singing, you do theater. Why don't you do musicals? You know, they're like, okay, I love musicals. And while I'm doing musicals, people told me, oh, you have a voice for opera. And I thought that opera was something that lasts uh, eight hours, that it's in Germans <laughs> and all the singers at 800 pounds. And I thought it was that. And and it turned out that not at all. It's actually the, the, the I mean, you have, of course, some of that stuff happening, but um, you, you have to dig for the good mm -hmm. stuff. And, um, and one night I went to the opera and I said, that's what I want to do, you know? And, uh, but quickly I understood that, um, I was capable of learning the thing very um, uh, with. I'm very. I'm a very disciplined person. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm a very like the army. You know, I've I've always been like uh, I, I I always say hello. You know, to people, hello, please, sir. You know, I'm very into mm -hmm. that. Very, very into that. I'm very old school about it uh, actually. Uh, but in the same way, I understood that in the opera my personality would be the key for me really to to make it because i saw so many great opera singers from russia from uh, uh, asia from everywhere who where i was like wow that's really something else so i needed to come up with with something and these people who are really really good they were not working that much you know they didn't have so much work so then i was like okay i don't just want to sing at home you know what i mean i want somehow to make uh, a living and and to be able to share it and 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 i, and I was like i want to perform in stadiums mm. man i want my stuff to be seen by all over the world and i want to be able to communicate with uh with music and when i really started and i started to be a little bit on my own in a way and started to perform um repertoire other than the one of opera and to mix it i was really one of the wow. first you know so you had the three tenors uh, domingo pavarotti who did it but they were already big stars but me i was kind of starting and i was already mixing stuff with the stand-up comedy with ladies and gentlemen how are you uh, when at the time when people they were told not to upload between mm. songs you know so I kind of arrived like a, an alien in, in that world. And, and, and now, you know, it's, it's like an everyday, mm. everybody is very, is very open. He changed social media. We can watch opera on YouTube. But back in the days, even talking about YouTube, when I put uh, um, a video of me uh, in, in opera, I was so much one mm. of the first that when you would put opera, you would see me on the first page. You know, and and uh, and people remember were writing me stuff such as, "Oh, why don't you put a, a video of you in the shower singing <laughs> opera?" You know, like it was seen so badly. Or when I had a website, mm. you know, uh, to the point that on Google you would search opera singer, you would see me in the first page. You know, and people were like, "Oh, you, your company, your business, you're an artist. Why do you put?" You know, so it all starts, you know, with the uh, with thinking what is really the best for you, for the mm. people. And, uh, and everybody's a little bit mm. different, you know? So, you know. <laughs> what do you love about making music, though? Oh, man. It's, uh, it's this magic that when I sing, I forget about mm. everything else. It's, uh, 
I cannot tell you. It's it's uh, and it's infinite. You know what I mean? It's infinite. You know, it, it, you know. The other day I was thinking, I said, "Can you believe it's the same twelve notes?" And for the last five hundred years, all the music that has been done, all the business that has been done, all the jobs he had created, all the tears and joy of people uh, uh, when people go to concerts and people go to enjoy is I really, really love music. And also meeting with mm-hmm. composers, you know, and, uh, and the dramatic aspect mm-hmm. is that we can use music to tell stories also, uh, which, is, which is a lot of fun also um, with musicals and with opera, with all kinds of stuff. And um, I, uh, I really love what I do and I love to navigate between... Uh, between styles and genres also mm. that's that's also one thing that i that that i really love you know so um with your music everything you're working on life is going okay 2020 uh was going just the way most people planned it and then march 2020 the whole world shut down how was that initial shutdown for you well, me, I really lived it uh, pretty bad because I had a musical, uh, Anne Frank, a musical with, written by my friend Jean-Pierre Dida um, that was supposed to open on March 13. Mm. And, and uh, two hours or an hour before the curtain were, was supposed to go up, uh, I had to... Um, Basically, I had to uh, cancel mm. because out of 13 actors that I have on, on stage, six of them got COVID. Wow. You know, so they woke up sick. And in those days, in, in this time, we didn't know. People were like, oh, I have fever. The other one, oh, I keep coughing this morning. Oh, I don't feel sick. I feel tired. Mm. So we were all like that. And it turned out that also got COVID, you know, and I got it really bad, like for Three weeks to a month, wow. I really lived hell. I really, really did lived hell. So it, it was very difficult because we rehearsed very, very hard. And right before the first performance, mm. the very first, we have to cancel it. So we, as a matter of fact, bringing it back in March mm. uh, 2022. And, and for almost a year, the theater was closed. And uh, when we came back, I still saw the, the box of Starbucks uh, that was still on the table, thinking that <laughs> we will come back the next day for the show. Wow! We didn't know that wow! Wow! That's a year insane. later, we'd be able to access to the theater. It, it was just ridiculous, yeah. and um, uh, no, it was it was hard. But as soon as I started to feel better and to heal, um, I understood that it was an an opportunity that we will never get again. Mm. You know, where I, I understood right away that we will be stuck for a lot of time mm. that it won't be just um uh one week two weeks it would be at least for like four or five months like the nurses and the people at the hospital they told me maybe in a year we'll be able to to reopen something so i was like you know what i'm not going to bother with the shows when everything will reopen then i will reopen but for the moment we're going to leave it as mm. it is and i'm going to use that time to finish all the stuff I ever wanted to finish. Mm. So I wrote many plays, many musicals. I started to write and produce many albums that I never had the chance mm-hmm. to, to, to finish, which I was able to finally to finish uh, in books and recordings and, uh, and uh, yeah, and call the people I wanted to call and, uh, and do the, the projects I wanted to do. And I understood I had the second chance in life because I really almost died with COVID. So I was like, okay, that's my second chance from now. On, I'm not going to wait a day mm. to call the people I want to mm. call, to talk with the people I want to talk, to do the stuff you know I want to do. And many people told me that. A lot of people who I met who succeeded big time, they all told me, man, uh, I die, almost died of a car accident when I got out of the hospital. I mean, I couldn't go alone to the bathroom. So I was like, when I got out to the hospital, I was like, okay, that's my luck. I appreciate life and I'm going to move mountains mm. because we have only one life. So that's a little bit what happened to me. And um, and I must say that 
since COVID basically started, it has been very um, profitable for me because I've, I've created so much, you know, so so many, so many stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm. I'm I'm happy about you know what I was able to do, but I always knew that when everybody is looking to that side, you have to look mm-hmm. that side. You know what I mean? So that's really where at least you're alone, you know. Um that really that really helped me, you know, also mm. a lot. Yeah, man. Glad glad you're feeling a lot better. Um I, I know friends you, that brother. had COVID and it can be it can be a crazy experience so but like Disaster. now you have this new lease of life uh you got better you made the tahari documentary um after the experience with that director like once you started making this documentary with tahari what are some of the lessons that came out of this process for you oh um well the good thing is when I started to do that documentary, I had 20 years of producing shows and producing festivals and producing music and producing. So I knew how to be very well organized. I knew how to plan ahead. Uh, the team I hired uh, are the same team that has been filming my shows for uh, many years. So it, it, it went uh, really, really, really well. But I, I learned a lot from uh, Elita Hari, definitely. And, and I learned from the people who I interviewed uh, who are part of that movie. Mm. So it, it was really uh, going back to school and learn from him. But also it, it was a lot of challenges, of course, when you do a documentary about uh, fashion. Mm. And so what I did is I watched as many documentary fashion documentaries i could and um and i was like okay what i do not want to see what is boring what i don't want you know so the the kind of stuff i saw were either the the people were talking to the camera like this yes i was born ta 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 ta, ta. others they were living their lives and the camera was following them like this you know and they were ignoring the camera you know so yeah so okay so let's do that and you know what i mean yeah <laughs> and me i really wanted him to to tell a story so it was more like this like i was uh, in front of him and he was yes and i was ta, 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 you know so that's a little bit how i designed mm-hmm. it and also it you know always work with um uh the kind of images that that you have and uh, and and also I found out that I could use the same techniques I have for my shows and for comedy that I could use for movies, which is testing, mm. you know. So I was able to try it out, to try the movie to people and see their reaction and and making them watch. Already, when someone is watching mm. your movie and you are near them, you realize stuff that you would have never seen if you were just mm-hmm. on your own. Even if the other person doesn't see, there's something magical about it. And um, and yeah, definitely when when I had friends at home, I showed them the movie. They they told me some very very interesting feedback. So when I presented the first the first cut, which to me was pretty much advanced, but I said to Ellie, it's just a small skeleton, you know, like it's very very basic. But for me, it was like you know very much advanced. But um, he was very reassured and, and he really loved it. And after I presented to him another one, he, he, he was really, oh, this one is really good. And, and then that, that, that's why I went. But I would say I started in July to film, July 2020, uh, pre-production in June 2020. And the movie was uh, ready to be shown in... Um, in June 2021, July 2021. So it took a year. Mm. I'm like, again, the passion that you put into this project is very evident. I'm curious though, like, Thank what you. did you want to be growing up? Uh, honestly, it was always um, being an mm. entertainer, you know, entertain people, uh, uh, not being the center of the attention, but I wanted really to to make people laugh. Like, even when I was, seven year old i eight year old i still remember it not 
you know exactly but i remember some of it that at the end of the of the day the teacher was taking me putting me like uh, you know in front of the board you know in mm -hmm. the center of the class and so okay david you have 10 minutes the class is yours and i would do impressions <laughs> i would do uh i will say jokes i will play i would sing something and make people laugh when i was singing and that went on like for many 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 years at school so it was always to make mm. people happy why you why know? do you feel that was that important was really to you? what i even no yeah and even in life you know when i i hate problems i am very diplomatic if someone gets angry i'm, I'm like you're absolutely right i apologize and you know even though you know i wouldn't feel i've done anything wrong but that that's the last thing i want is not mm. about being right is about being smart so i i because you have a lot of uh, homeless people who think that they are right you know so it's mm -hmm. it's about being smart and and i want really really to uh, always to have good connections with people and and i work with people on the long term like the people i'm doing the movie here in paris uh the production team are people mm -hmm. i know for 20 years you know so um it's it's on the long term, you you work with with people, and uh, and your relationship is very different with them. And uh, and you know, I, I I just want you know people to have a good um, impression of me. But I'm not like please <laughs> love me, please you know, not like that. But I'm more I'm more like sure whatever you want, you, no problem. It's mm. always a yes. Don't worry, we we'll make it work. No, you know, I like that approach. Good. Like you know, life shouldn't be that hard. You know that's just my pro like mm. life shouldn't be that hard you shouldn't have to be stressing every day or stressing around the people you walk with you want to personally surround yourself with the people that you get along with it just makes life easier and the things you're working on a lot better anyway i a thousand percent agree with you israel it's um it's but with a person like you they only <laughs> love you brother you know what i mean <laughs> No, it's true. I mean, you, you have people like yourself who are really having such a great personality that it's, mm. it transpires, you know, from they don't have to say anything that you're like, oh, okay, I, I can tell that person mm. is a good person, you know. Um, same story when you see, I see sometimes a guy, I'm like, oh, this guy is a multi-millionaire. You can tell, you know, and the person mm. didn't show you money, you know. So it means that he, the 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 personality the soul mm. really transpires mm. so now you're in paris mm. how is paris and what are these projects you're working on well paris is great i really love to 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 go back i need i really need to come back sometimes to to france because um it gives me the opportunity when i come back to new york with tons of more ideas and more projects and also um i come back more fresh you know uh that's also very good and when i'm in paris and i'm away from everything from new york i'm kind of uh, able to see from a distant place you know so i i sometimes see better um but P paris is great i have a car i can drive paris i i love it i love driving so and the food is amazing and I have a lot of friends here. So it's, it's really good. So I, I did a lot of stuff. I did a movie where I was as an actor, I was not directing. It was a very big movie in France and we filmed in Paris in South of France in Madagascar Whoa. Island. It's a very, very big movie. And, um, also, uh, what I, what else I did, uh, I performed in Armenia. Wow. You know, uh, I had some shows there. Uh, in two weeks, I'm going to perform in Dubai for 10 days. I have a lot of stuff there. And I'm directing one movie. It's a documentary about a filmmaker named Eli Shoraki. He's very well known in France. And he did some stuff in the U.S., but mm. he's very well known in France. And I'm doing another one about um, a filmmaker named Lisa Azuelos 
with whom I did a disco show of Broadway in New York called Lost in Disco. And she uh, directed and wrote the movie LOL with Miley Cyrus mm -hmm. and Demi Moore, you know. So in, in France, she's a big star in France. And uh, so I'm doing that movie uh, about her. And I have tons of recordings that I've done. And, and uh, I have my own record label. So I signed also some uh, some talents here who I'm developing doing their music videos and uh, and then in January I have um, there is a film festival that I'm producing here and also uh, there is Eddie Tahari actually who is coming to Paris for the Paris Fashion Week and he's going to get an award at the UNESCO and we're going to have the premiere of the movie in Paris in movie theaters and then back to New yeah, York in to February, get ready for hopefully. your show that was closed <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna start to rehearse in February. And start okay, to open so in March. you know, you are seeing that thing, just like naming all these things you are doing. I'm tired just hearing it, and you are the one doing it. Like, how do you have all this energy to do all these things you are doing? Well, it's easier these days than when it was 20 mm. years ago when I started, because now you have emails. You know, you can find the information. You can write to many people at once. Um, I'm just telling you, you can send uh, an information to, I don't know, like 50 journalists mm -hmm. at the same time. You know, me personally, I like to write dear, you know, and write something specific, you know. But back in the days, you had to call, you know. Back in the days, you had to print and put it in an envelope. And, and I remember spending three days just <laughs> to put it in an envelope with the stamp three days you know so why now it's taking me three minutes you know so you have more time and also the big difference is that back in the days i would get like three months for an answer um and usually it would be a no but now like I get an answer mm. in, in three minutes, basically, you know, and, and uh, it's faster with people because they know me, you know, so I get right away something to see that I'm legit and that I'm a man of my word. Uh, so it's, for me, it's faster. What um, um, I have more time also to work, to learn my lines, to work on my, uh, on my music and, but what really really i started to limit are uh, a lot of the trips you know i used to go i used i saw with covid like the time that i was wa wasting in um in uh, how you say in um in traveling with the planes and everything and and now i i, I with the macbook pro i mean in the plane you can work as if you were anywhere else with your iphone you can do almost everything so It's like you're constantly um, mm. working versus being in an office where you will work, let's say, on the day of eight hours. You will really work like three hours, two to three hours, because you have a lot of mm -hmm. talks and how was your weekend and da, da, da. Oh, you said <laughs> you forgot to put a hello on an email. That person is offended. We have to do a meeting <laughs> about that. Oh, okay, whatever. So a lot of that... BS, yeah. you know, not to say another word, um, is going, so I work a lot alone so that I, you know, I, I, I count on myself to do, to do things. I have hired a couple of people, but um, I show them once if they don't get it, mm. I take somebody else, you know, because I cannot come back and mm -hmm. otherwise I'd rather do it myself. But it's, it's much faster, you know, it's, it's much um, faster, but I never felt that I was legit to do, to be in that business. I thought I would be just the guy who would be a dishwasher because I did that for so many years or, or uh, you know, a waiter or mm. maybe a cook. You know what I mean? So for me, when people call me for a gig, mm. I can never say no. You know, when I meet a... a Uh, I, I met a big director and he wrote this gorgeous musical and it was never done in the US in English. And I'm like, mm. let's do it in New York. You know, let's do it in English. Let's do it in New York. And the guy says, 
I want to do it with you. I'm going to say yes, you know, and I'm not going to wait. Oh, <laughs> let's do it in a year or in two years. I'm like, I have this opportunity. I'm going to do it now. You know what I mean? I'm not going to wait that someone comes and, uh, and, and takes the job. And if it's not working fast, you know, I, I, I love Napoleon. I read a lot about Napoleon. And he said he had the smallest army, you know, but they were the fastest and they were attacking with a lot of um, uh, efficacy. Mm, of course, mm, I'm not mm. promoting wars or anything like that, but it was, you know, 200 years ago, it was another era. But um, what I'm saying is I understood mm. that speed is everything. You have like, to strike when the iron um, is hot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I learned one thing from, the, uh, from one French president, uh, Nicolas Sarkozy. He said, a good decision is nothing. A good decision is a good idea. So you have the line of a good idea that meets mm. the line of time. Is a good idea mm. at a right time. If now you, you have an idea to say, oh, let me invent internet. You'll be like, dude, it's <laughs> too late. Yeah. You, you, you're too late. You know, but th 30 years ago, that would have been like, oh, mm. okay, let's, what's about? So, and same thing, you know, we talk a lot about cryptos these days. I'm like, let me try, you know, let me see, let me try. Because many times when you look at, let's say, stocks and you're like, can you believe that company 30 years ago worth 1% one, <laughs> 1 mm -hmm. of what it's worth now? Or even 5, 10 years ago. And you're like, oh, I should have done it. So now I'm like, mm -hmm. I try stuff. I do stuff. And, uh, and it's like, you know, there's that, that, joke of that jewish guy who is like every day he dreams to win at the lottery mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know at mega million you know say please god give me i want to win he prays he goes to the synagogue every day he he does only good deeds everything and one day he dies he arrives in front of god and he tells him god i don't understand every day i prayed that I would win, I did everything, and you never made me win. And God told him, I wanted you to win, but you never played a dollar. Yeah. You know what I mean? So the, 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 the funny thing in that is that you can hope, you can have the wish, you can have the good heart, you can do Gotta. anything you want. But at some point, Gotta. you have to deliver the goods. You know, at some point, you have to go there, you have... To, 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 to send the email, to press the button, to push the door, to, you know, um, mm. to do that. And that I've always done. But I was always afraid of what's higher than me. Like, uh, oh, I'm not going to mm. go to Amazon. They're too big for me, you know. Oh, I'm not going to go to, you know, to, to these ones. They're too big for me. I'm not going to submit my stuff for the Grammys. You know, they're too much mm. for me. And I was nominated at the first round of the Grammys this year. So... Just to, to, to tell you, it's, it's never to, it's good to feel also, uh, I would say, impressed by what's bigger than you. But um, it's also good not to wait because I'm not, I don't want to be in a wheelchair and go to knock mm -hmm. at doors and say, please give me work to sing. You know what I mean? Is while I'm healthy, mm -hmm. while I can do it, I want to do it Indeed. now. You know? Wow, David. I love your chair, man. I want the same chair. <laughs> it's a gift from a friend. I'm, I'm really grateful for the chair. Oh, man. I wish I had that kind of friends. You know? I mean, my friends, they, they give me a bottle of water. That's it, you know? <laughs> um, so, well, how do you relax then? Like, what do you do when you want to relax? When I want to relax, I love to smoke a cigar. And, what's so f and, and drink a nice cognac. And what's so funny is that I said that in a couple of interviews and every time I go to perform in an Eastern country or in Middle East or in, uh, I don't know, like uh, in Maghreb, North Africa, you know, they, they offer me a box of cigar, <laughs> you know, as a gift, you know, welcome. So I have a little bit here, but mostly in New York, I have, I don't know how many boxes <laughs> of, of, of cigars. Like I have cigar, like, for a whole New York, maybe I can open a store. <laughs> and cognac for so many 
but uh, but yeah, I was in Armenia. They offered me cigars. They offered me. Uh, uh, they have their own cognac called Ararat over there. They offer me tons of bottles of it. So sweet. So I like these sometimes. I like to watch a movie um, while I'm also working. And uh, and a movie for me is good is when, okay, let me close the work computer and let me look at the movie. That happens from time mm-hmm. to time. Uh, and I like to watch the classics of movies because, uh, people tell me, you haven't watched that movie? No. You know, we always feel like that. Have you watched? They always tell you something you don't know and you feel like you don't know anything. <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I, I I do that. And, and also sometimes I like a good party. Mm. You know, I like to to go with the friends in the club and, and take a bottle and, and, and party with people and people I don't know and say, hey, how are you? Hey, yeah. As, you know? I, I like sometimes this also, not all yeah. the time, but let's say you know once every two three months maybe. Um, mm. But only when I'm in Paris. Oh, okay. So Paris has the best parties, yeah. you see. No, yeah, I would do one night in Paris if I'm in London. I go to London. I go in Miami. I will go. Um, but I said in New York, the the party change is is not as it used oh. to be, uh, because now you have promoters who have all people who are with their tables. Mm. They don't want people anymore. When we used to dance mm. and, 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 and meet people or be at the bar, meet people at the bar, mm. you know, now it's kind of a very uh, separated, you know, but I, I want to go only to, I like to go to places where I know the people at the door, where I know the manager, when I know, you know what I mean? Mm. So... Mm. I feel better when, when it's the case and I go out with people I know I'm confident with, mm. you know. I, I'm so. curious, you know, with all these things you do, what's your stance on social media like Instagram and Facebook and all that stuff? Well, I got my uh, Instagram hacked, oh. you know. Yeah, I don't know how they did that, but they, they I got it hacked and, and I lost it. We wrote to Instagram. It was a crazy story. So I, I kind of lost my uh, my Instagram. Mm. Uh, but we'll see. We we, we filed a, um, some sort of a claim uh, to um, Instagram to to have mm-hmm. it back. Uh, but otherwise, yeah, Twitter is very helpful, and Facebook is also uh, uh, very very helpful because it keeps me updated about my friends, what they're up to, what they're doing, and uh, and you know, so you can support also your friends by put them a like and congratulations and and also the birthdays because i always forget <laughs> uh besides few friends uh friends yeah. birthdays and when you meet people they don't necessarily tell you oh by the way yes. my birthday is you know so it's good that on facebook you see the birthday and you you can send yes, me the word yes, definitely yes oh man yeah. david is always a pleasure ch- chatting to you uh, uh, and I uh, know, brother, you know, anytime. you have this whole plan over there in Paris. Uh, so I'm going to let you go. But I need to ask you this question just in a few sentences, right? Of course. All these experiences and then all you've got out over the years. Like, what kind of advice would you share to someone that's like, I love what David is doing. He's doing all these things. I'd love to build my career towards that position. What advice could you share? Oh, um... First of all, um, don't show your work until there's nothing more you feel that you can mm-hmm. add. You know, one of the biggest mistakes I did, I did when I started out is that because I had the ambition that was stronger than the level <laughs> that I had. So I managed to open big doors and then when people were hearing me, they were like, oh, okay, all right, whatever, thank you. So then after, when you come back to these people and you're like, no, no, I'm better. They're like, yeah. Um, <laughs> you messed up that yeah. time. So they, they don't know that you can right. make progress. And, uh, and, and really focus really on knowledge, on learning, on education, on learning things. Now you have tools like YouTube. You can record yourself with your phone. You can, um, uh, it, it's so easy compared to before, you know, it, it, you know, I wish I could record myself 20 years ago and hear that 
that and that mm. was not good. You know, you can try yourself out. You can build a small stage at home and and film yourself, you know, and, and see what's wrong mm. and what is good. And you can do a, a recording at home and yeah. try it out before you put it out. Now, these days, a lot of people, because they are in the do-it-yourself, uh, I would say, uh, uh, syndrome, yeah. they think that they are record label. <laughs> they think they are producers. They think they are, you know, they take a photo with their phones. They think mm. they are photographers. Uh, they write uh, one or two phrases online. They think they are journalists. It's, it's, it's a, a craft, you know, it's a craft. But don't be afraid of, uh, of uh, learning. It's never, it, you never mm. stop learning. And uh, don't say to people, um, uh, I know how to do, you know, even if you know, be like, uh, please, I need your mm. help. Help me, please. Whatever you can mm. tell me, I take it. Mm. You know. Wow, David, uh, this is just so much nugget of knowledge, man. Oh, you're the sweet. I want your <laughs> accent. I told you, man. I want your accent. <laughs> How do you say it throughout the years? The years how do you um, say it? How do I say it? Through the years. Through the years. Oh, through the years. I'm Nigerian. From, it's Nigerian. <laughs> oh, man. I've done a movie with a great Nigerian man, uh, Samuel Obole or something mm. like that. I mean, yeah, man. People of Africa, yeah. sweetest world, sweetest uh, people, yeah. really. It's a uh, really wonderful man. So they, they do great yep. movies in Nigeria. Yep, they do. Yeah, I did one with um, his name is Richard. He goes with RMD. three letters. R M D. Yeah, yeah. I did a movie with him. Uh, Alice in uh, not in Wonderland. It was Alice in something. Oh. Alice in America. Okay. I'll be sure to check that out. Yeah, yeah. Man, good, David, yeah. I'm going to I'm gonna yeah. let you go because you're one really busy man. Thank you, brother. <laughs> no, don't let me go. I don't want to go. Well, thank you so much. And uh, again, thank you for sending in anytime, your film brother, about the super talented Mr. Tahar Ali Tahari. And I can't wait to watch these films you're working on in, in France. Thank you, my dear brother. I will send them to you in priority. And... Thank you for having me. It's really an honor to be uh, to be in front of you, to be by your side, and uh, I hope to see you in person very soon, my man. Yeah, hope so too. Thank okay. you. <laughs>